Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. Get us ready. Get us ready. Get us ready for you, Lord. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Let your fire fall. Soldiers march. Soldiers march. For the coming of the Lord. Soldiers march. Soldiers march. For the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Mm. For the coming of the Lord. Mm. Let your fire fall. For the coming of the Lord. Mm. For the coming of the Lord. Mm. Let your fire fall. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praises to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. How are you all doing? Good morning. I pray and hope that you woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord. And that you are ready to conquer and be victorious in this day. Amen. All right, so this is a year in the Bible, daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Amos 7, 8, and 9, and then Revelations 4 and 5 this morning. All communications are open and welcomed on this live feed, so I pray and hope that y'all are ready to make comments and communicate. And uh, and just really engage in the reading of the word. Amen. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God. Excuse me. We thank you, Lord God, that you have woken us up this morning and that you're getting us on our way ordering our steps. We thank you for making us and choosing us to be a part of your will, your pl purpose, and your plans, Lord God. We do pray that you get us ready for you, Lord, every single day. Get us ready for whatever comes our way. Get us ready for anything. Equip us. Give us the resources prepare our minds, our bodies, and our souls, Lord God. We pray for health. We pray for good health. We pray for increase in every area of our lives, Lord God. We pray that you increase us in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we get into the word. And we pray to hear your voice and know your voice to have that deep relationship with you, to be able to have a conversation with you, Lord God, to be able to hear your instructions and your directions, Lord Jesus. We just pray that we are here ready to be an acceptable, holy people, peculiar people to you, Lord God, and that you are our God, you are our Father, you are our Lord, and we glorify you and we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you are and all that you are doing and all that you have done in our lives, Lord God. And we just pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God. If ever y'all have any specific things that you would like for me to pray, don't don't hesitate to make your prayer request known. You know, let me know what it is. All 
All right, so let's go to Amos 7, 8, and 9. That means we'll be finishing off Amos today. We'll be finishing Amos off this morning. Let's sit up here. All right. All right, thus hath the Lord God showed unto me. And behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. And lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O Lord God, forgive. I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, saith the Lord. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire, and it devoured the great deep, and did eat up a part. Then I said, then, then said I, O Lord God, cease. I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. The Lord repented for this. This also shall not be, saith the Lord God. Then he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house Ooh, excuse me, of Jeroboam with the sword. Wow, I I I am gonna pause right there. I think that's that's really amazing. So God showed Amos two things that he wanted to do. And Amos was able to say, Lord, but Jacob is so small, like he said you know, forgive. <laughs> he said, Jacob is so small, forgive. And so the Lord said, okay, I won't do that. Like, that is so awesome. Like the type of relationship he had with Amos to where he can show, he shows him two things that he wants to do. And Amos was able to get the Lord to repent and, and the Lord says, okay, that won't happen. You know, I'm like, wow. I, th I thought that was amazing. Yeah. All right. So verse 10. Amos 7 verse 10. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos saith, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah. And there eat bread and prophesy there. But prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. I, what I 
want to understand is wh- why do these people think that they can stop God from using a prophet to prophesy? I don't like how do the why, how do they think they can literally stop God from prof- to to prophesy through a prophet? Like they really expect for that prophet to just obey them and say it and, and, and be like, no, don't prophesy over here. Go over there and prophesy. Like I, I, I can see why God is is looking at them like, you know, and he's punishing them because they really feel like they can just come and tell a prophet, oh, you can't prophesy over here, you know. And, and like they can just really stop God from using that person to prophesy. Even even if he was, even if he was to leave that land and go to Judah, he could still prophesy about Bethel, no matter where he at, where he is. You know, it's like. It, it just sometimes, you know, the way people think and the way they the way they, you know, respond, it just, it's like, you can't, you can't stop God from prophesying. Even if you ask that prophet to go somewhere else, you can't stop God from prophesying about that place, you know? Anyways, so verse 14, then answered Amos, and said to Amaziah, forgive the yawns this morning. Forgive me, forgive me. Says, I was no prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son. But I was a herd man and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, go prophesy unto my people Israel. Now, therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. Thou sayest, prophesy not against Israel and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus said the Lord, thy wife shall be an harlot in the city and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword and thy land shall be divided by line and thou shalt die in a polluted land and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land it's like god is saying you want him to do what you know you and 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 there are times where i i actually come across people and, and and i tell them this is what god is wanting and they because of what i'm doing or or saying they don't agree with it it's like you want me to disobey God? I'm not about to disobey God. You can't ask me to stop doing something that God told me to do. You know? And so here God is saying, since you're asking him to stop prophesying, since you're asking him to not do what I said, this is what's going to happen. You know? Don't, don't, don't let, don't, don't turn around and tell, don't turn around and tell somebody that, that, that is saying, this is coming from the Lord. This is what God wants me to do, you know, and don't tell them not to do it. Don't, cause that's, that's literally asking them to disobey the Lord God almighty, you know? And if you say, well, what if they're, what if they're fake and what if they're, what if they're fake, uh, a fake prophet or what if they're, what if they're a fake teacher? Uh, well, you'll, you'll know if they're fake or not. You like, if you, if you are keeping your ears in tuned to hear God's voice and you are literally allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you, he gives you discernment of the spirit and you will know if they fake or not, you know, by, because they, they can't hide everything about them. See, fake people hide stuff about themselves. Fake people, they, 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 they hide 
whether or not they they lie or or uh they they they're committing fornication or something or whatever something that they're doing that's causing them to be fake they they're not able to hide that too much long you know god will put them on blast you know so you don't have to you don't have to worry about if you are seeking diligently seeking the lord then you'll you'll know You'll know who's fake and who's not. So don't don't ever go up to a prophet and tell a prophet not to prophesy. <laughs> and even Amos, he don't feel like he's a prophet. You know, he said, I'm not no prophet. He said, I was out there gathering sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And he told me, he said, go and prophesy. He said, I'm not a prophet. But God told me to prophesy. You know? All right, so let's move on to Amos 8. All right, Amos 8. Says, thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, said the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy. Even, excuse me. Whew. It says, hear this, O, o ye that swallow up the needy even to make the poor of the land to fail. Saying, when will the new moon be gone? Says that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit. That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes. Yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their works. Shall not the land tremble for this and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up woefully as a flood and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day. And I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an holy sun and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north, even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. So the Lord God, I mean, and we we even gotta look at what's going on in our in our lifetime, you know. Uh, we have people that oppress, we have people that 
continue to make the poor poor and the needy needy. I mean, you got to think about it, you know, with with the with the taxes and and um they they raise the taxes, they raise all the prices, but they don't raise the minimum. They make it to where we can't keep up, you know? And and so the poor stay poor and the needy stay needy. And, 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 and that's happening even now, you know? And so God, God, God don't like that. <laughs> you know, God don't like you to continue to make people poor and make them needy. You know, we're, we're, we're supposed to love one another. So we're supposed to love one another. So to where, you know, uh, we we share and we we uh take care of each other you know and that, and that's how it's supposed to be so god is saying i'm not going to make a famine with bread i'm not going to even make a famine with with water he says you won't hear my voice anymore he says i'm not going to even pass by the people i'm not going to even pass by them I'm not, they're not going to be able to hear my voice when they seek me. They're not going to be able to. And, and so th that a lot, that's what a lot of, a lot of things that are happening, like people, people are seeking his voice. People are seeking him and, and they don't, they can't hear him because he's not speaking. All right. So Amos nine. Any comments? Any comments? Don't forget to make comments. Don't let me be the only one talking. All right, so let's move on to Amos 9. It says, I saw the Lord standing up on the altar. And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword. And it shall slay them, and I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And the Lord God of hosts is he that touches the land, and it shall melt. And all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up woolly like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven, and hath founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me? O children of Israel, saith the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtar and the Syrians from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, The evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. 
In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom. And all of the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed and the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people and they shall build the way cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So God is saying he's going to come in and, 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 and sift, you know, and he's going to, the ones, the ones that he can see in their heart, he can see in their heart that they still worship him. They still, um, they still acknowledge him. They still do what they can to obey. He's going to, he's going to sift, he's going to sift, sift them out. He, he's going to uh, remove the sinful ones. All the sinner ones, all the ones that sin. He said, they'll die by the sword. The ones that feel like, oh, my evil ways and my 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 bad ways is not going to do anything to me because they feel like they are they are chosen people of God, you know, and there are people that are walking around like that. They feel like, oh, I know that I'm a called one. So they they, they feel like they can still get away with whatever they want to get away with. and And that's not the case. They're not going to get away with whatever they want to get away with. You know, for some people that some people have a really, really hard time believing that God punishes. They have a really, really hard time believing that. That God will come down and punish you. When God punishes, he punishes he corrects, he rebukes, you know, they, 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 they feel like they feel like they can just be able to just, you know, they feel like they can walk. They feel like they can claim the Lord Jesus and still walk in sin. They, it, and, and, and they feel like God is not going to punish them. They, they, you know, and God, and God is saying, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. You're not going to be able to continue to do that. And because, because they think this way, that's why so many people think that Christians are, I mean, I hear it all the time that Christians are hypocrites. Christians are, are this Christians are that, you know, because people, there are people that walk around, you know, claiming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, but then they turn around and they're, they're still sinning. They're, 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 they're sinful, you know, and, and they make, they make, they make the true ones. They make the real ones look like, you know, we're like them and we're not, you know? All right. Y'all are going to be quiet this morning, I see. All right. So we just read Amos 7, 8, and 9. We finished off Amos this morning. If you are just coming on, good morning, good morning, Kingdom Citizen. So we're going to read Revelations 4 and 5. Four and five this morning. All right.
right. So chapter four, Revelation four, it says after this. So, you know, we just got through we uh, the past two days. We just read the seven letters to the seven churches. That the um, that the angel of uh, Jesus Christ himself actually came and gave to John to write. And he even told him, write, write these, write these letters, write what I tell you to write. Okay, so now we're in four. It says, after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Which said, come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one set on the throne. Excuse me. Okay. And he that sat was to look upon like a Jasper. And the sardin stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Excuse me. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast, beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was a, like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night. Ooh, y'all have to excuse me. The the oxygen to my brain is 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 not flowing right, and it keeps me it keeps me yawning like that. So y'all have to forgive me. Okay. So they, they rest not day and night saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever, the four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. And cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now, how how exciting and amazing is that? Like, for one, he gets, he okay, so he gets to go. He gets to go to heaven, to the throne room. He gets to go to the throne room, and and then and and there he there he is again mentioning that there are seven spirits of God. So out of, out out of the throne out of the throne proceeds lightnings and thunderings and voices. So on this one throne. It's like the, 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 the light, like, could you see that lightning and thundering on this throne and, and, and the seven voice, the seven spirits, seven voice, uh, the voices, 
And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So it's like on this throne, all the seven spirits are sitting on this throne and lightning and thunder is coming. And and, and, and then he can hear the voices of God just coming out of this throne. Like, I would love to see something. I told you, I told you before, the book of Revelation was the only book that kept me interested in the Bible when I was growing up. It was stuff like this that, 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 that interests me. It was like, wow, like God is seven spirits and, 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 and when he speaks, it's, you can see the lightning and the thunder and the voices of God. It's like, that was always, and then his, and then the beast, the creatures that he make, you know, and how they are, they never rest. And they're always saying, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, which was and is and is to come. And then the 24 elders get bowed down, throw their crowns to him. And, and then, I mean, all of that, it, it just, it just excites me. I get, I, I get excited when I read the book of Revelation because it's, it's just, it, it helps me understand the power of God even more, like who God is, you know, and, and it, 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 it allows me to see like, you know, father God, you know, it, it allows me to see him when I read the book of Revelation and and who he is and 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 also you know it, it helps me to 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 know you don't want to make him angry <laughs> you don't want to kindle the fire of god in his anger and wrath you know you don't want to make him upset and so you know it's like who would not want to worship? Who would not want to worship the creator? You know? And of course, you know, growing up, I had to really understand and learn that there are go- there are people out there who will never, who will never worship him, who will never believe in him. But they will see. They will know that he exists. It says every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess, you know, whether they whether they want to believe in him on this side of heaven or in hell, they 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 are going to know and confess that Jesus is Lord. So it's like, why would you not want to just go ahead and just worship him? You know, and believe. All right, so Revelation 5. Says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So you got, okay, so look at that. You got to, you got to understand it's got seven seals because there's seven spirits. So so each, each spirit placed the seal, placed their seal on the book. (laughs) Seven spirits of God, seven seals on the book. So they each placed a seal on the book. And so here's this angel saying, who is worthy to open this book, this particular book that God, which is seven spirits, then place the seal on this book. So verse three, 
And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne, so in the midst of the throne, so you got to you got to understand there's seven spirits sitting on that throne. And of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So Jesus Christ like, this is so exciting to me. So Jesus Christ comes. So you got the seven spirits of God. And that's why you can, that's how come you can know right here that God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, all are, all are one, all are the same. I mean, they're, they're all in one and all the same. It's like, it's, it's, and there's a mystery behind it, you know? So it's like, wow, okay. So here's Jesus Christ. So he had to come out himself and be able to open up the seal because he's the one that sealed it. He's the one that sealed it. The seven spirits of God sealed the book. So one of the spirits had to come out in order to open it because no man was worthy nobody not 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 in heaven no no man in heaven no man on the earth no man underneath the earth like there was no one able to open this book or even look at it you know so verse 7 and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. So they collect our prayers. Like they're collecting our prayers. The golden vials full of odors, which are prayers of saints. How how awesome is that? So that so there are 24 elders collecting our prayers in vials of odors. Our prayers is a smelling scent that they're collecting right now. Like when we pray, when the saints pray, they're collecting our prayers. Verse nine, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. So Jesus Christ steps out. He steps out and he says, I'm going to open up the seals. I can, I can hold this book and I can look in this book. And so he, he takes here is God sitting on his throne 
with seven spirits and he says i'm going to have to open up the i'm going to have to open up this book cuz he go, and he goes he comes down as flesh in the name of jesus like I don't know who if if anyone else is getting excited about this. This is like and 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 it makes you want to just say holy 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 are you Lord God almighty. Amen. Holy 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 are you Lord God almighty. All right, so verse 11 Verse 11, and I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. So all the angels, look at that. 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. Man, glory, glory, glory to the Lord God Almighty. And I want to be able to stand before that throne one day and and hear the lightning and the thunderings and the voices look at me and say, well done, daughter. You know, I mean, like, stand before the Lord and, 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 and I just fall and worship him and just glorify him and, and say worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord God almighty? Amen. Like that is, that is like, you know, awesome and amazing. As you can see how much I just really enjoy reading Revelation. <laughs> you can you can see it in my face. I really do enjoy reading Revelation. I, I really do. It is it is it is such a that he even allows us because he allowed John to go into heaven in the spirit. You know, because his physical body could not go there. And and so his physical body could not go there. So that's why John said, I, I was in the spirit. So he had to spiritually go and, and go into heaven. He was able, allowed to go into heaven. Now, I don't know if any of you know what that's like to have to be able to, you know, literally in the spirit. And and I've I've been done that way. I I've experienced that where God wanted me to see something and show me something, and I would go in the spirit, and um, and so He was allowed to see these things and then write them down so that we can know, like we're able to know that God is seven spirits, like the re revelation, God is revealing a lot of things. And, and then that's not all of that. That's not all of it. Like it's in the word where it says that everything is not written in the Bible. 
all of it is not written in the Bible. He only gave us enough of what we needed to hear and read, you know? Excuse me. Like I literally have a lot of pressure going right here. Uh, and, and, and it's cre- it's making me yawn uh, <laughs> when I when I'm getting a lack of oxygen to my brain I, I start really really yawning a lot so y'all have to forgive me for the yawns I'm not tired so um, but anyways any comments any comments I don't know how y'all can just sit by and not say anything because that was that was awesome that was awesome and p- powerful reading you know it, it, for me it's really really hard to to read revelation and not have a response you know to read the book of revelation and not have a response it, it's hard for me because that I think I've read the book book of Revelation at least over a hundred times in my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> That's how many times I've read that book. Anyways, any comments, any comments, any, any, anything to say? Well, you hear the joy in my voice. <laughs> That book, that book is always going to get me like this. Like it does. That book always gets me like this. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is, but, um, yeah. Oh, excuse me. I, I also, I, I believe also because there's parts of God that you don't, there's, there's parts of God in the book of revelation that you read about that you don't read about in the, in the rest of the Bible. Like we just pretty much got through all through. We, we have a few more books left and then we'll be finished with the whole entire Bible. But there was a, and I forgot which book it was, but there was a part, there was a part, um, in the old Testament where God pres- where God shows himself and presents himself that was exciting to me and he's showing who he is but it's not the same as in the re- book of revelation like there's there's revealings that God revealed of himself in the old testament who he is and what what type of God he is but in the book of revelation there's a whole lot more that you get to learn more about him like nowhere in the old testament does it tell you that he's seven spirits uh it it make a mention of it in the new testament part but not until not until the book of revelation do you actually really get to be told that he's seven and not just three like Things like that. And then and then how many angels there are and it, it, it just all all of it excites me, you know. Through John's eyes, through John's eyes, we get a glimpse of the actual throne room of in, in heaven, you know. Right, this is the only book where it is mentioned. Yeah. So it's like you read the whole entire Bible and, 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 and it says, you know, uh, um, baptized and God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy ghost. It talks about the trio. So it only talks, you know, it talks about the trio over and over and over again, but then you get to revelation and it says, Oh yeah, by the way, he's seven spirits. You're like, what? (laughs) Wait, seven. He's seven spirits. Many scholars believe these seven spirits are in Jesus. Well, it's 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 almost describing that sort of like it's like John is looking at the throne room. He's looking at the throne. 
He says he hears light, he sees lightning and, and hears thunder and the voices. But then when it comes to the book, they say, well, who, who is worthy to open up this book that is sealed by the seven spirits? So the seven spirits sealed this book. So Jesus had to come out. And, 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 and that was also, you know, is saying that Jesus came and the seven spirits on earth because they are one. They are one. So it's like Jesus comes, he comes in flesh. He He's born of a virgin. Then he dies on the cross. He rises again and he's on earth he goes and returns back to the throne and it says he sits at the right side you know it's like it's it's so awesome all of it is so awesome and 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 it's like amazing so he's saying so john is saying this you can he can see the so he still looks like a slain lamb so after all of this john gets to get a peek into heaven and he said he looks slain like he. You can tell that he had been. Because. Even when he went up. When the disciples watched Jesus go up. An angel says, what are y'all looking at? And then he says that same person, that same body that you saw go up. Is going to be the same one that comes back comes back down you know so he you'll still see the piercings in his in his uh wherever they pierce the nails wherever they put the sword when they when they sliced him and water and blood came out it's like you're still going to be able to you it's like john can still see those things Cause he said he looks you you can you can see that he's been slain, and he rose again. Like that's it's like that. I'm just getting goosebumps all over me. Like <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps. Like the it's like I can feel the hands of the father just like. Yeah. I I I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God that he is who he is. I I I glorify the Father that he is who he is. And it, it's it's just that confidence that 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 the Bible talks about when you have that confidence of Jesus. Like I, 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 it, it pours all on me and, and I, and when, and when I read about, you know, everything that God is, it's like, like who can mess with me? <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> no one can mess with me because do you know who father God is? Like you said, correct. Even doubting Thomas touched the wounds as proof of his resurrection. Amen. Yep. So it's, you know, it's like he could have, he could have removed all of that. He could have removed all of that, but Jesus keeps it on him. So it's almost like, it's almost like when we, when we get a scar or, or we get a cut or anything like that, I really believe like the scars that are on us is going to still be, you know, because those are those are war wounds and it's like Jesus is letting you know I did this look at me <laughs> you know so when we see him we will be like whoa you know cuz we we will see the the scars and like even on could you could you imagine John is seeing the scars on his on his forehead from that crown that they put of thorns and 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 when they went the whips on his back the whips on his back like 
man, I'm just getting like, and 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 when you see that, you you can understand why the elders would fall to their face. And throw their crowns like you are the one that's worthy of this. You are the one that's worthy of this crown. Holy, holy are you, Lord. I mean, like you can understand why the beasts don't rest. And they say, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God almighty. Like right now, they are up there. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. And then the elders fall to their face and throw their crowns to him and say, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God. Because they're they're they are they they are seeing the scars for what he did. They 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 get this they they seeing it. And so they fall to their face. Night and day. I mean, there's no night up there, but they all day doing that. Like, and and could you just imagine what we will do? The moment we, we get up there to heaven and we see him, eyes of flame of fire, like bronze skin, woolly white hair beautiful and then we see the scars we're gonna fall like i don't know if i'm gonna be able to even move like (laughs) i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to move i'm gonna probably fall right there be like boom and he's gonna have to pick me up (laughs) because i'm gonna be like whoa like i i'm just I love, I love Jesus. I love my Lord God Almighty. He is just awesome and exciting to me. I'm just, and to know that I'm a daughter of his, like, that's my father. You know, that's how I get that. That's my father right there. Look, my Lord, my savior, like he saved me. That's how I get, you know, it's like, man, like that's, that's my father right there. You know, that's, that's, it's like, that's how I am. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm all giddy. <laughs> I'm all excited. Um, I, I'm, this is how I get y'all. Y'all have to, you know, either, either rejoice with me or, or, or not, but I, I can't help myself. <laughs> I really can't. Um, um, just knowing that just knowing that my name was written on the palms of his hands when he died on that cross and rose again you know no 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 person nobody can say that they actually died and rose again for me you know no one can say that you know it's like only, only Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Like, and so for each of us, for each of us, for each of you, you know, you can know that your name was written on the palm of his hand. Your name is written in the heavens. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You know, that, that, that God himself came and said, I am going to finish this. I am going to finish this. I'm going to finish this for Beverly. I'm going to finish this for Patricia. I am going to finish this for LaShonda. I am going to finish this in everybody's name who he called. He predestined for you to have a place in heaven. Like, how could you not get excited about that? Like, this is literally a temporary home, temporary place that we are on. Like, this is not it. This is not it for us. So therefore, you you don't have to be afraid of death. 
You don't have to be afraid of death. Those who have already died in Christ, they're not even dead. Those who have died in Christ are not dead. It says there, those who have died in Christ are just sleeping. They're just resting. That's it. And, 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 and we're all going to be taken up into heaven, our permanent home, you know, praise God. Amen. Like this is just a temporary stop stomping grounds. Okay. Temporary stomping grounds. We, we are not going to stay here. <laughs> Thank God that our forever home is in heaven. Amen. Yes. Glory, 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 glory to you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you for bringing us salvation, you know. Uh, glory, glory, glory. Waiting for that day. Amen. Waiting for that day. And, 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 and you know, I, 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 I like the fact that he is making us more like him. That we get to have the image of Christ. That he is molding us and building us to be like him. Like we can, we we are, we are being developed into having the mind of Christ, to be able to see the way He sees, to hear the way He hears. You know, I, the the fact that He's saying, "You are mine, and I am yours." Like, like we are His, and He is ours. That's, I mean. That's exciting. Glory, glory. I could sit on here all day and and just just praise and worship him. That it is it's amazing. Any other comments? Any other comments? Cuz I'm going to be on this high for a good minute. I'm excited, you know. So any other comments? All right, so that's it. That was the reading of the word. If you are just coming on, you'll have to go back and watch the replay. We read Amos 7, 8, and 9. So we finished off Amos today. And then we read Revelations 4 and 5. So you'll have to go back and watch the replay. Definitely go back and read those, those particular chapters, go back and read and, uh, meditate on it, study on it. And, um, uh, I don't know if it'll bring you the same joy that it brings me. Oh, excuse me. Especially reading in revelations. Um, you, you throughout the whole Bible, th- throughout that whole book, you'll probably see me like this every morning <laughs> reading that book. But um, invite and share, invite, invite and share and uh, let everyone know that we are reading the words of God every morning at 530. And um, and uh, just I'm excited for the maturity and the growth. So. Um, but that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. No one else has anything else to say. So I'm going to let y'all go. I love you. Love you. Love you. You know that I do. And, um, I pray and hope that you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.